Hello, hello everyone. How is it going? My name is Macy Satantio and I am going to talk about holiday food cooking for some of our sensory eaters, family members. So I have a very special guest today, a longtime friend, um, ad advocate, um, another autistic foodie. I like to travel and therefore trying new foods comes with the territory. So anyways, JR, let me go find JR for us. Okay. So, so just to let he's on Instagram and Facebook and also Twitter. So, uh, JR, I just, okay, there you are. I'm here. What's uh, up? Uh, Oh, I see you. I see. Uh, I see you in the kitchen. Yay! Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Okay, Hold on. Let go. me adjust there this thing. There How we go. are you? Oh. I'm good. I see your I'm purple you? uh, beer. Yes. Yes. Purple and I'm wearing my. I thought we were gonna be festive together. <laughs> uh, you know what? I. I right. So I just about about you know, I, I'm wearing my reindeer Christmas sweater for this event. You know, if you want to talk for 30 <laughs> no, seconds, okay. I can run across the that's house. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, I, that's I, okay. I, I'm totally so, willing to. Um, so hi, everybody. This is my friend JR. And JR loves to be in the kitchen. And on his Facebook, I always see photos of your food, JR. So why don't you tell, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a late diagnosed autistic adult, um, diagnosed when I was 42. Uh, just like you, th there was no such thing as special education or even autism as we right. know it today when you and I were yep. kids growing up. And so like most of us, I felt weird. I felt, well, I was called weird, stupid, mm -hmm. and lazy by my teachers and just never really fit in. But th right. my diagnosis was like an epiphany. I mean, the first the first words out of my mouth when I when I walked through the parking lot was, "Wow, yeah. I'm not weird, just autistic," and that kind of started my whole advocacy for the last right. 15 so years. Right. So your Facebook page is called uh, "Not Weird, Just Autistic." So if people want to find you on that platform, right. but tell us about this concept of my autistic kitchen and what you're going to be doing. Okay. Well, I, like you said, I, I love to cook and you know, not everything right. is in recipe books. Right. There's so much online right now, but <clears throat> if I go mm -hmm. to a normal food blog, I, I can't mm -hmm. stay for more than two to three minutes because pop of all right. the, the pop-up ads, the overlay ads, the, the brightly colored ads. So my idea was to come up with a food blog that's sensory friendly mm -hmm. and neurodivergent friendly by not having yeah. all of those elements on there. So it's, it's some place that we can go and we can feel yeah. comfortable reading and, and f following the recipes. But I also want to talk about what so many yeah. of us deal with, and that's yeah. food sensitivities and, and ways to maybe yeah. get around yeah. them. If so, you will. I have a very sensitive uh, someone in my family, my son, who is very, okay. uh, he has a sensory uh, sensitive palate, meaning that. Yes. Uh, well, let's talk about the difference between picky. What do you think is the difference between a peak, picky eater and a sensory eater? Uh, I think a picky eater, if the parents, for lack Correct. of a better term, push hard enough in the right way, right. they will get the child to eat. Um, I, I have a sensory mm -hmm. thing with broccoli in its tree form and cauliflower right. in its brain-like form. And right. so there were, no matter what my parents did, right. I was not getting that stuff down because right. I was gagging and 
So to I me, agree. that's the difference. I mean, one, you don't want to eat. The other, right. you can't eat. Well, uh, my son was able to tell me that uh, when he cannot, it's not that he doesn't want to eat it, but it's because truly he just cannot eat that particular food. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, right. he, 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 you can't get it down your throat. Yeah. I and mean, he was he, saying he that it was not just the taste of the food, but also the the visuals of the food, the smell. And it's like it mm-hmm. hits him. All five senses, right. all right. together, all at once. It was, yep. it was such a turn off that he would gag or he would he needed to leave the premise. You know what I mean? So the smell... The yeah. taste, the visuals. Yeah, well, so uh, it's no joke for him, <laughs> you know. No, no, I, I, uh, I mean, I'm like that with mustard. Uh, you really you will not bring mustard it, into my house. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, but it's right. funny because I love vinegary stuff, which but it, mustard yeah. is vinegary. But, so you would no. you would think I would like it, but. Don't right. like the smell, don't like the taste. Right, right, right. So I think sensory, now, sorry, sensory eaters, oh, sorry. it's one of those things that I think people maybe don't grow out of it, as opposed to if you're a picky eater as a child, Correct. over time you might overcome that. Right? So, right. yeah. Now, yeah. Now, going back to my uh-huh. sensory thing with broccoli and cauliflower. Right. It's in that form. I'll eat mashed right. cauliflower, cauliflower mm-hmm. puree, broccoli cheese soup, broccoli if it's diced up mm-hmm. real fine into a casserole or a dish. It's just in that case for me, the right. sensory is the feel in my mouth, right. not the taste. But some people have mm-hmm. just taste. Mm-hmm. Some people have just smell. Some people have just the textural all and of them, which makes it really tough. Three. And um, so also with sensory eaters, you cannot hide those food, the no-no foods in any form because they will be able to, uh, they will be able to find it. They'll know. And That depends. Uh-huh. If it's the text, if it's just a texture thing, right. you might be able to hide it. But if it's a smell yeah. or a taste, yeah. uh, no. Well, you're, you're I, you, I have learned my it. lessons. I mean, to me, I think it's it's better to, if you're going to work on introducing new foods, is to just come out clean and work with that, with the goal, with your autistic family members or autistic sensory eater. Because if you're starting to hide food, you know, you have those food blogs teaching parents to hide veggies and make a, I don't know, zucchini bread, <laughs> you know, those recipes. And to me, yeah. I, yeah, no, I, I, I get with that. my kid, you know, because he would know JR, like he, his sense of smell and taste yeah. is so like sensitive. He, and that would break his, ta- his trust, you know, and he, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think you, as a parent, have right. to look individually right. at your child. Again, uh-huh. whether it's just a textural yeah. thing or it's a taste and smell thing. If it's just simply a textural thing, I mean, yeah, it, absolutely tell them, but they're not as likely to find out right. or figure out right away. As yeah, and I think issue. kids are smarter than we give them credit for. You know, because if they even have kind of like, oh, something doesn't taste the same, you know, even if they, they're not able to verbalize, it's kind of like you're, you're, they're building that barrier. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. No. And, and I, I've got a Mm -hmm. a 25 year old daughter. So, you know, I, Uh I've raised a picky eater and I, I raised all that and, and I, I know you, you don't no, you don't. No, you trust. don't. So let's talk about holiday cooking. What's what's on okay. your menu, okay. and what are sensory eater friendlier type of holiday foods? 
Well, I, I think it really depends on mm -hmm. what the sensory issue is. Um, but finding textures mm -hmm. that they like and then finding ways to make foods into those kind of textures, uh -huh. for example. I mean, if you've got somebody that likes mm -hmm. soft things like, like mashed potatoes, like yogurt, you know, mm -hmm. like the things like that, you know, try to, you know, make mashed mm -hmm. sweet potatoes or, you know, put the, cook your carrots until they're nice and soft and kind of mm -hmm. tender in that, you know, so if, if you put them into a format like, that you know that they, they, like. they right. like and yeah. enjoy, th that's a good thing. Um, you know, another thing is oh. I, I don't like sour cream. I, I it's the same I, texture. I don't it's know mustard. why. I, Similar texture. See? Yeah. <laughs> Different color. Yeah, but... yeah. But what I'll do a lot of times is when a recipe calls for mayonnaise, I'll uh -huh. put in some plain Greek yogurt. And that gives the, the meal or the right. dish the same consistency is having it in, yes, but I don't have correct, that sour cream correct. flavor. Uh, welcome everyone. So I just wanted to shout out some people. So we have uh, Chef Ava Marie, who is an autistic chef actually from the Bay Area. So hello, welcome. And we have people from Indonesia. My friend Becky from Indonesia is here. Hi, Beck. And we, of course, we have parents. Do we have parents here? Do you have an issue? Uh, cooking. Are you like me still cooking three different types of meal every night? So that is my life. The story, because my son, I have two sensory eaters and me and my husband, of course, we try to eat healthier because we're older, but that is the story of my life. I am still making lunch boxes. <laughs> Don't say you're older because we're about, <laughs> that makes me older. <laughs> but that is something that you know, am I env envious of parents who can go to these fancy restaurants and travel and not have to read up the menu ahead of time? Of course, you know, I mean, that's easier, right? But it, I, I have accepted that I, it is what it is. I'm supporting my teens who are particular with eating. So uh, it's going to be up to them someday to like, learn how to be more adventurous, you know? Yeah, you know, I, I'd actually be interested if the chef is still watching, if she can maybe throw down one or two things that she sees a lot in the restaurant as far as sensory, sensory issues, if there's any that yeah. are more common than others. Yeah, what do you others. think, Marie? Do you, what do you think about these uh, particular palette or certain you know so so in in case of my family member like he prefers bland foods so he would actually eat cauliflower because it's bland and white foods is okay. typically like bread pasta no sauce right maybe right. with a little bit of butter that's okay so for this holiday cooking i'm making homemade mac and cheese because he can make his own box mac and cheese or the one that he'd heat up the, in a microwave, which, you know, to me, that's right. so not appealing, <laughs> but that's what he yeah. can and uh, want to do. So he knows I have told him I'm going to make a big batch of homemade mac and cheese because you and your cousins can eat that. And he said, yes, it's fine. You know what I mean? So I, I can't sneak in yeah. new things. Yeah. No, and you know what? There, there's nothing right. wrong with, with right. doing that, making him separate, you know, something that he likes. And, you know, I will say this. For yeah. the family members who say anything, tell them to, keep, <laughs> tell them to mind their own business <laughs> and deal with it. You no, know? I mean, I, I'm, I'm serious. I am, I am so sick Judgment. Yeah. of yeah. family Judging. members and, and hearing the stories yeah. about, yeah. oh, well, Johnny should do this. No. Yeah, Johnny should do or, what Johnny or grandparents needs to do. telling parents that we're spoiling, you know, our uh, sensory yeah. eaters. Look, I think it's embarrassing enough for teens not to be able to eat anything 
um, all these yummy foods that oh. people just look forward to at gatherings. You know, they're not able to eat anything. Do you think that's pleasant for them? No, it's not pleasant. No. Oh, I, I, I can tell you that, I mean, you know, right. broccoli is something you see on a right. majority right. of places and restaurants. So how do you think I felt as a teenager? Just like, right. Right. No, I'm not right. touching I, that. I mean, that's, <laughs> it, 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 right? it wasn't So, better. yeah. So let me look at some comments. I think Chef Ava Marie was saying, yeah, I get that. I often sneak pumpkin puree into my baked mac and cheese. It's healthier than the box stuff. Oh, Ooh. there you go. Ooh. That's an idea. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So, you, um, so I have made a... Uh, cauliflower mashed potatoes it's actually uh, i could eat yep. that and you put a lot of cheese and you use uh, uh the the puree that this thing this what is it called <laughs> you know what i'm talking about yeah. it's not a mixer the food yeah. meal thank you the food meal. so then that's that the makes it like the texture like still creamy right um right right or like a Right. Uh, Jer, how do you feel about fried foods? Fried foods can hide a lot of the stronger uh, tastes, right? Okay, well, let's discuss fried and, and okay, di go differentiate ahead. what we mean by fried. Are we talking air fryer so, fried? Or are we talking we are fried a oil? proud chicken nuggets family. <laughs> when I first came to America, I love McDonald's chicken nuggets, <laughs> you know, when I was like 15 and so on. And we actually love, you know, going to McDonald's. And McDonald's is a very common staple in um, family's freezer because I think chicken nuggets is very consistent, right? It's like mushed chicken mm -hmm. parts and breaded and fried and you can it's you can easily get some from costco in bulk so that i always have that right yeah. um and i think for for my kid he now can eat uh chicken fingers <laughs> chicken patties <Cool>. cheese, <laughs> chicken nice. eggs. and uh, i have made them in air fryer actually and he would he would um, okay. Taste it at least. So to me, that's progress. Yeah, but I, I I'm talking. If you truly want to hide the taste of something, good old. Well, actually, oil. yeah. So <laughs> so the fried form is preferred to him because then it kind of hides yeah. the texture. So like he's he he likes uh fried fried pot stickers for example, um, and he prefers it okay. all fried instead of just pan fried. You know what I mean? Yeah, now, now, that being said, I, I do have an air fryer. I, oh, yeah, do, I love do too. my air fryer. And there are right. a lot of things I will, I will cook in the air fryer, but, you know, mm -hmm. onion rings and stuff like that. I mean, that's just, that's just right, right. oil food. Right, right. But, you know, and you fried can stuff. hide some of the vegetables. Mm -hmm. By mm -hmm. breading them. Mm -hmm. and Are there them. any ways and, in the bread and breading or coating um, stuff that's like healthier? Like, can you do anything about that? Um, you know, you can use things like, well, the in the breading, not so much. I mean, you can use things like crushed right. up tortilla chips, mm -hmm. crushed up pretzels, and mm -hmm. things like that to use as breading. But I, I don't know that that's right. really any healthier i think the healthier comes in i i uh, fry everything in coconut that's oil. that's smart correct it's a much healthier oil to cook with um you know it has a it, okay. it hardens at a much lower temperature okay. than right. regular oil so it, i think for the healthy you're going to come in yeah. really with when you're talking about fried foods right. what you right. cook it in not so much the breading because what do you breaded panko or flour right. or or crushed pretzels yeah. or a combination of stuff. Yeah. That's not yeah, really yeah. good. So maybe the using uh, coconut oil or avocado oil is health, right? Yeah, it's healthier than using one. canola oil. If you must fry something, mm -hmm. 
so Chef Ava Marie said egg rolls. Yeah, egg rolls. Egg rolls yeah. are actually not bad in air fryers, right? It's not bad. You spray no. with no. some avocado no. oil, and then it's it's edible, right? Right. So so so. Yeah, I, I I've actually got spray avocado right, oil right, for right, doing right, just right. stuff like that. So mm -hmm. go ahead. And and the other thing, I guess you know, when you're talking about the breading, if you're trying to fry something that you know you're trying to get them to eat. Uh, if they have a favorite chip, or if mm -hmm. they have, if they like pretzels or stuff like that, try incorporating some of that into the uh, breading. Oh yeah, because it's a flavor and a taste that they already right. identified right. with. And so that's like. true. So, um, so for all the parents here, so Bex, I'm reading your comment here about never pressure, pressuring your child, uh, and you, and I help help him to explore without any pressure. Yeah, that's the key is not putting pressure because I think as parents, especially moms, you know, we tend to be, we can be very anxious around food because we're feeling the pressure that we're being told, well, our kid eats crappy stuff. I've heard about that as well, you know? <laughs> and, and, you know, the other thing, to think of is no. we're not stupid people you know we we tend to be smart and right. if you tell us a story right. if you tell us about the food yeah. and explain something cool about it then we're, we're more likely yeah. to go out oh, you know, our logical brain will take go oh right okay yeah right Let, let's check it out yeah it's, it's like yeah. an experiment or that the other thing, if you put it to your child like that, right. hey, we're going to try an experiment. Yeah. Right? We're going to try this. So, back see how it uh, is. my son and I actually watch a lot of Food TV Network. We watch uh, the British Bake Off Championship. You know, so actually, he's very curious about the process of making food, including foods that he cannot eat, like steak, you know. Mm -hmm. So he actually right. commented one right. night, we were watching one of the cook cooking shows. He said, oh, that's how you cook steak, you know. So he's very curious about the process. So process, knowing the process of doing something yeah. is very important for autistic people. So even for your little ones, you know, just looking at pictures and talking about it, get getting cookbooks full mm -hmm. of photos. That's really helpful. Yeah. Uh, so, and and also cookbooks by mm -hmm. chefs and authors yes. that explain things. I mean, I love. Yeah. It, it, it's the the autistic nerd in me, but like you were talking about the mm -hmm. processes, I oh, love yeah. Alton Brown. Yeah. And, re and watching his stuff on TV and reading because in his cookbooks he explains a lot of the yeah. same stuff that he explains on TV and you're like wow I really yeah. I really so want to try Alton that. So Brown explains the science behind cooking so which is really perfect so I think um, even just reading or watching Alton Brown often I watch a lot of YouTube uh, there are a lot of fun YouTube channels, uh, like food and travel. So mm -hmm. give our kids some background about, you know, food that people eat in different parts of the world. It's really fun, right? So don't, that's a way to uh, do storytelling about food without putting pressure about you must eat this food that I have made. <laughs> so like, yes. yes. So it is, yes. yeah, I, I've I been there, it. really. I, it. I've been there. I just work with, making chicken nuggets homemade, it's really hard. It takes a long time. So, yeah. and then when your kid doesn't want to eat it or can I mean, you get really frustrated. But you know, what? you know what's a cool trick? When you have time, uh -huh. Make the chicken nuggets yeah. and then you freeze can them. Can do that. Yeah. Freeze, yeah. freeze them for when you for when Yes, you and there are lots of do have time. YouTube channel or just online recipes about making your homemade chicken nuggets. So if you want yeah. to experiment and make extra, that's that's 
good. If you can involve your child in it, that's even better. So, uh, so yep. Chef Alpha Marie was saying, I also encourage kids to watch Rachel Ray's show on NBC because she does do simple cooking, actually. Yes. Emerald Cooks on Roku. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so what are, do you know of any like kid-friendly cooking shows, JR? Yeah. Yeah, actually, um, Fox has done a Master Chef okay. Junior for I think eight or nine years, and Top yeah. Chef has done mm -hmm. a Top Chef Junior for two or three seasons. So I think mm -hmm. watching their peers mm -hmm. actually do these things yeah. is yeah. a really cool and way for though, them to learn. Yes, even, it's, and, even and though, I feel like uh, they can do it. It's just maybe baking. Start with that. So my son has a sweet yeah. tooth, so he actually would make New York cheesecake. That's the only form of dairy that he would eat if it's in the form of a cheesecake. So when he makes it, I just pack that for lunch because, hey, it's eggs, it's cream oh, cheese, awesome. eggs. It, you, why not? You know, go ahead, take it to school. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's okay to just start yeah. with whatever. Follow their lead, basically. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and let them know that yes. it's okay to fail once because I can't tell you how many times yeah. I've watched something like the Bridge Bake Off and gone, I can do that. Then four hours it's later, really I'm going, It's really hard. Oh. It's really hard for, yeah. <laughs> you know? it, 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 yeah, as I'm watching something that's, you know, supposed to be level. It's not easy, but those shows are <laughs> so fun to watch and, you know, you're not emotionally, yeah. like, you're not actually doing it. So, yeah. And, and you know, yeah. if I'm cooking at home, I normally I, I have a cooking oh. jams playlist. It's yeah. just, it's music that's kind of loud and loud and upbeat and fun yeah. that I can kind of sing to and That's a good idea. Yeah, it's man good. dance. Just, you gotta, <laughs> yeah. You know, it just just to have fun and then you know, you you, you put stuff yeah. in a pot, you're yeah. working stuff and you're trying new things yeah. and you're like you yeah, take a little yeah, taste yeah. and go, No, yeah. that didn't work. How so fix it now? what is, when you were doing cooking with your daughter when she was younger, were there any particular like kitchen tools that you would use? I have a few that I'm going to show the parents here. Oh, here it is. Oh, I, I have spoon. one. <laughs> because, because I love wooden spoons. And it's also the kind of thing where you can look at it and go, you know, <laughs> we probably need to work on that behavior, don't we? <laughs> because she's heard all the stories about right. grandma. And the uh huh. Uh -huh. And so that doesn't actually bring good memories to begin with. <laughs> no, I, I, I had to go to therapy for a while before I could. No, no, but the, the wooden spoon, I have one here. So this is actually a good tool. When I cook with my clients, I use tools like this, whether it's spatula or it has a lot of room for two people to hold. So mm -hmm. you can give your autistic child a job of like you hold the top part, I hold the bottom part, and we're going to stir together. And you combine that with singing or music, follow along music or counting. Yep. That makes it uh, like you can really immerse and collaborate yourselves into the activity this way yeah. so we always say don't do a and hand over hand because that's really like then it's not fun for your kid anymore because he's thinking oh you're forcing me to do this right. i don't want to do this anymore right so yeah, right exactly. so instead exactly. doing hand under hand so you can have your kid's hand on top of yours so he's actually in that position mm -hmm of leadership and doing, doing the, the work for you, if you want to call it that, give them a chance to be the competent yeah. one to do this. Or you could just do it like this, right? Yep. Share the handle, holding yep. the handle. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I, I do want to say that this oh. was not scripted <laughs> ahead of time. But my tools or a spatula oh, wooden spoon as like well. We think like exactly the same tool. So... And an immersion oh, blender because I'm making nice, blackberry nice. barbecue sauce. So here's the thing, right? 
So which, which you can my find the recipe. family member does not, he doesn't like to touch slimy things. So did you know, JR, that you can actually buy this, this thing here? Can you guess what that is? I'm guessing it's something that somehow deep. So this actually holds an egg. Earlier, it holds an I, egg I, I and cracks it open. Yeah. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. So there are yes, tools like this um, to actually crack your eggs and um, without you having to touch it. <laughs> it's funny, right? That because is cool. that means. There are so many sensory sensitive people. It's more than you think. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to find stuff like yeah. this on Amazon. Yeah. I got this from Amazon. Well, I, I, I've said when I, when I speak before, I've said that if it moves, if it exists, there can be a sensory yes. issue related yes. yeah. to it. Yeah. For, for somebody. Somebody can right. have a sensory issue to right, anything. Right. I mean, they're, they're, they're the more common ones, but we can true, be sensitive true. to anything. But tools like this, I think, uh, is a po possibility yes. for you to guide your autistic family member to have a work around the sensitivity. So don't give up. Definitely don't give up. Just keep working on it. Oh, what's that? This, you put it in. And you can oh. hold your onion or potato or whatever you're slicing because sometimes they get a little correct wet slippery on the outside. Yeah. You know, they're you know they slick on the outside, slippery. This will hold. You put it right in, and then you can just hold on to this, mm -hmm. slice your onions yeah. up, potatoes up, whatever, and right. not have to worry about right. hacking off right. your finger. Yeah, yeah, or that's smart. So, okay, so if we were to do this cook along show monthly, you know, so what would be some, yes. do you guys have any requests of a dish that? Well, I, I, th that would be my answer is that right. I would want to hear from people what they'd like to see done yes. and then we can pick one of those. And for those who don't know what she's talking about, we decided that we would pick a dish. Right. Both make it at the same time. On that would be fun. Live right? Instagram. Or we could we could take turns. Like you could. Yes. You you could. Uh, yeah. I can watch you make a recipe, or it depends on what it is. Like yeah. uh, if yeah. if it's mac and cheese, you can make mo one version, and I can make one yeah. version that is exactly. like uh, that works for us here, for example. Right. So. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so if you have any requests for recipes, write it uh, in the in this recording, in the discussion part of this recording once I publish it. So uh, I think that's it. Do you have any last words, JR? Uh, uh, well, I want to thank everybody and let you know that myautistickitchen.com uh, is live now. Uh, you can sign up to be notified when it goes live. And I'm going to send out just before New Year's a newsletter with a few ideas and some recipes oh, that's for fun. a Did New you, Year's party. Can you read that, JR? Chef Alva Marie said, let's do a chop mystery basket to benefit, to raise funds for autistic uh, oh, autism. Oh. That would be really fun. I'm de Chef Ava, I am down. As long as it's not <laughs> Cutthroat Kitchen, because that show is yeah, just Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fabulous idea. And for those who don't know what Cutthroat Kitchen is, people bid on yeah. disadvantages for their opponents. Like one, one I saw the other night, the guy had to, uh, had to work the whole thing with a spaghetti, right. you know, the spaghetti scoopers. Oh my with gosh. one of those tape tools. No, 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 no. That, I would actually I mean, those lose are... my fingers if we do that online. <laughs> yeah. I will, I think I that's will do fun. a chopped mystery box. I think that's I fun. Not, Maybe we could do, kitchen. like, for example, yeah. make something with zucchini. You know what I mean? And then you do that, and yes. I do it. Oh, Maybe you and Chef Ava should do it, because you guys are the professionals. <laughs> well, I, I did work in the kitchen <laughs> for a long time, so... <laughs>
I don't, know, I don't know if I'd say professional yeah. to level shit. It's, it's is, all good yes. fun, and you know we we should do this more often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. I, I would love Sounds to. Sounds good. All I'd right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and happy holidays, Merry Christmas for those who celebrate. And Jr., thank you so much for coming to my space, and we will we'll plan the next one, right? Okay. Oh, Take yeah, care, yeah. everyone. Bye. Have a good night.